Welcome back to the Parkinson's Doctor YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Ramon Rodriguez, neurologist and Parkinson's disease specialist at the Neurology One Clinic in Orlando, Florida. Um, I, I take care of people with Parkinson's disease on a daily basis, and I'm I'm humbled to be able to uh, to work with a with an outstanding group of uh, doctors and nurse practitioners, nurses, and a and a full medical team that we dedicate. Um, our time and our lives to take care of, for people, of people with Parkinson's disease. And today I'm going to take a few minutes to uh, once again speak about hallucinations in Parkinson's disease because this is a very common question and and, and sometimes I, I, I make a video and, and that video creates even more questions in some people. So I would like just to take a few minutes to talk about uh, the things that you need to know uh, in a really uh, quick and straight to the point video uh, when we're speaking about uh, hallucinations in Parkinson's disease. And in, in first place, you know, how are the hallucinations in Parkinson's? What is it that, that people, patients, uh, or people with Parkinson's see uh, when they have uh, uh, hallucinations? And actually, when, when we have this conversation, we have to speak about the different phenomena that they might see. So in first place, there are hallucinations. An hallucination is when they see something that is not really there and there's no stimuli, right? You know, they're, they're sitting down in the sofa and they might be able to see uh, uh, kids playing or they may see uh, animals or they may have the impression that um, there might be someone else in, in the room because they they saw a shadow or they heard something. And, and when we speak about hallucinations, actually in Parkinson's disease, the most common ones are visual hallucinations that they are seeing somebody. However, there are other types of hallucination where they might, they might hear something or they might smell something or there might be even a hallucination about taste, right? Or a tactile hallucination. They feel like um, uh, that, that something is touching them or some abnormal uh, uh, sensation and then hallucinations um, can be fairly common. It can happen uh, in up to 70% of the people with Parkinson's disease at some point. And, and we always talk about what is causing them, right? You know, is, is this because of the medicines that people are taking to care for the Parkinson's or could there be something else? You know, could it be the Parkinson's disease itself? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, the next things are about illusions and illusions are uh, you know, when people see something, you know, for example, they see a, a sock on the floor and they think that it is it is a cat or it is a rat and, and, and they see something, you know, there might be uh, a tree outside of the house and, and the person might, might see it as a group of people. So that's what we're talking about when we speak about illusions and then uh, delusions. And delusions is when they have ideas about something happening that is not real and Probably the most common delusion that I see in people with Parkinson's disease are delusions of infidelity, where they think or they feel like their significant other is having an extramarital relationship. And if they're in, they they might see a third person in the room at night, so this can be quite uh, uh, disturbing for for them, right? So so once again, that's that's a delusion. Another common delusion is. Uh, I have patients that uh, they have this idea that the kids are, are trying to take everything from them, that their money, their bank's account, and, and they're trying to put them into a nursing home or a place uh, for them to be able to, to keep their, their, their money. And, and, and this is just very common. People complain about this. I have the family coming um, with, their, with their loved one. They have Parkinson's so we can have this conversation because they can... In, in first place, be a, a very sensitive subject, right? You know, many people don't want to talk about this outside of the house. And, and people need to understand that we as doctors, we, we are here to, to help you. And if you don't tell us about these problems happening, we, we, we are not going to be able to, to help you, right? So it is critical that we know about this. And um, these hallucinations, they typically can happen at any stage of Parkinson's disease. However, it's usually associated with uh, more advanced stages uh, or those that are, are suffering from cognitive impairment, people that are having uh, the mild uh, uh, dementia, memory issues associated with the Parkinson's disease. And when we speak about uh, hallucinations, you know, we, we sometimes as doctors use the following terminology. You know, is this hallucination a 
benign or mild hallucination, or is this a a malignant or a bad hallucination? And the truth is that hallucinations are hallucinations. And in most people, a mild or benign hallucination will continue progressing until it becomes a bad hallucination. The issue is that we don't know how long this is going to take. And, and, and because of that, it is very difficult for me as a physician to make a determination about when is the right time for me uh, to treat a person that is having hallucinations, right? Because in first place, we all know that people with Parkinson's disease are taking just too many medicines. You know, they are taking carbidopa, levodopa, two to two and a half tablets, three to four times a day. Uh, on top of that, they might be on, on rasagilin and some other medicines for their Parkinson's and they might be taking a blood pressure pill. They might be taking a diabetes pill. They might be taking an antidepressant. So when you suddenly see this, uh, that person might be taking 14, 15 pills a day. And now I am requesting you, I'm asking you to take one more pill to take care of this uh, hallucination. So many people, if they do not see the hallucination as something malignant, you know, they see children playing animals or something like that, they, they actually might prefer to live like that because they understand that those things are not real. The problem is that the day might come where they might lose that ability to understand that that is not real and they, they might react to them, right? You know, they might end up calling the, uh, the, the, the police or they might even, um, in some cases, uh, uh, become violent. So we need to keep all of this into perspective when we speak about the issue of hallucinations in Parkinson's. And the first thing that I like to do is, number one, look for medicines that might be provoking the uh, hallucinations. I have another video where I speak about uh, some of the Parkinson's medicines that might cause hallucinations, such as anticholinergics and, and dopamine agonies. And here I'm speaking about trahexyphenidyl, benzotropin, promipexol, ropinidol, and sometimes just stopping those medicines is all that we need to do to make these hallucinations get better or go away. However, there are medicines that are not typically related to the Parkinson that might cause hallucinations in people with Parkinson's disease. And I'm just going to give you a, a fairly common example that I see in my practice. You know, a man with uh, prostate problems, they are started on medicines to treat their prostate, such as uh, tamsulosin or or uh, uh, terosocin, and and they might they might have some uh, uh, the onset of the hallucinations associated with that. Some of them are taking benzodiazepines, uh, clonazepam, uh, uh, temazepam, or similar medicines, and they might develop hallucinations. Pain medicines, especially opioids, or some patients might be taking some psychiatric medicines. Right? You know, they they have Parkinson's disease. They might have a history of bipolar disorder, uh, depression, schizoaffective disorder, and the combination of medicines. Might, uh, might cause some of these uh, hallucinations. So my recommendation is always uh, to ask, can we modify the medicines the patient is taking to see if we can make the hallucinations go away? And then if this is not possible, then we need to treat the patient with some medicines for the hallucinations because as I mentioned, over time, typically these conditions are going to get worse. Now, when we finally make the decision to begin therapy for the hallucinations, the next things that people need to understand, you know, patients and their caregiver, is about the black box warning uh, uh, on medicines to treat hallucinations. And the black box warning from the Food and Drug Administration, uh, in summary, is that uh, there could be an increased risk of, of sudden death in people taking medications to treat hallucinations associated with dementia. Now, the one thing that we need to understand is that the hallucinations in Parkinson's are typically hallucinations associated with the Parkinson. This is when we treat them. So it's not exactly that uh, that patient population, although at some point people with Parkinson's disease might have some dementia. But regardless of that, the fact that we're taking a medication that had something called a black box warning, obviously, is a reason of concern. Uh, you know what? There's just no easy way to explain this, right? You know, our loved one uh, might be having some hallucinations. I have a medicine that might be able to control the hallucinations and improve their quality of life. And we understand that there is a risk associated with that medicine. And the truth is that as long as your doctor uh, has taken some uh, precautions, right? You know, making sure that you don't have an underlying cardiac condition, 
that might be aggravated by the medicine, right? If you don't have it, then we can think about uh, beginning that medicine and uh, and then try to minimize the medicines that, that the person is taking in case that there might be a potential for drug-drug interactions. But I always tell people that even if, if there's a new medicine coming today, that medicine will carry the black box warning. So this is a class warning. So any medicine used to treat hallucinations in people with Parkinson's or hallucinations in general will have a black box warning and people need to know uh, about them, right? So what are the uh, the therapeutic options, right? So after we, we clean all the medicines, make sure that the patient is not infected, make sure that the patient is not taking any of those medicines that might cause hallucinations, then we begin to think about the, the usual therapies that we use in people with Parkinson's disease. And, uh, you know, the first one we speak about is a medication called uh, Pimavanserin. The, the brand name is uh, Duplacid. It's actually the only medication approved by the FDA to treat hallucinations or, or people or hallucinations in people with Parkinson's disease or the so-called Parkinson's disease uh, uh, psychosis. This is a medication that is a little bit different from the other medicines uh, that we use to treat ha uh, hallucinations in the field of psychiatry. However, it does carry the black box warning. If the medication doesn't work, doesn't help, uh, uh, you know, other options include uh, there's a medicine called quetiapine or seroquel. There might be a medication called clozapine. Now, clozapine requires extensive monitoring. It's just very difficult and, and most doctors in the community really do not have the manpower to be able to use a medication like this, or they're not prepared for the follow-up uh, uh, required for this kind of medicines. But, 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 but there are some options to improve the, the hallucinations. You know, sometimes the hallucinations are severe. We need to do something about it, right? And, and we understand that there is a black box warning, and we need to have that difficult conversation with the patient and the family members about what the risk is and then what are we going to do to try to, to mitigate that risk or try to decrease the, the possibility of having a, a complication. So once again, this is a, a, a very difficult conversation, but there might be some, some options. There might be some things that we can do about the issue of the uh, hallucinations in people with Parkinson's disease. So the most important thing is, number one, have the conversation with the doctor. Right and 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 at that point the doctor might be able to to find that if these hallucinations might be secondary to some other medicine that you might be taking right or your loved one might be taking and then if if in fact this is part of the the Parkinson's disease psychosis which is something that we see in people with Parkinson's disease then we need to come up with a plan about how we are going to treat that patient so once again extremely difficult uh, uh, concept diagnosis. Uh, it's critical to have the, the, the conversation with, with your doctor. Each doctor will have an interpretation of the medical literature that will be a little bit different. And uh, they might be able to explain their point of view. Plus, on top of that, uh, your doctor might have a lot of experience treating people with hallucinations in Parkinson's. So they will be able to give you the best advice possible. Sometimes the answers are not concrete. They are not 100% but it's the best that we can do in those cases. So talk to your doctor, uh, have that conversation. There, there are options. There's something that we can do about uh, uh, the issue of the hallucinations in people with Parkinson's. And with this, uh, I, I, I appreciate your, your attention. I hope that you learned something in this video. I hope that at least I'm, I'm, I'm able to, to put that seat for you to have that conversation with your doctor about the issue of hallucinations with Parkinson's. I will keep coming back about, about uh, the treatment of hallucinations in Parkinson's and as new things uh, are available or uh, we do more research, definitely I will be coming back to continue having this conversation. Or if you have some questions that I probably didn't discuss in this video, I'll be happy to come back and talk about them again. Thank you very much and until the next video. Remember to uh, subscribe for you to continue obtaining uh, the updates when they become available. Thank you.